Violet and Greg have been hearing strange noises at night. They work on an aircraft carrier, so it isn't unusual to hear the waves at night, but this was something else. And as the air alarm went off, it was suddenly clear to Violet something strange was going on, and what she sees on the horizon gives her even more questions. Violet stands on the top deck, looking at the sky. The air alarm is going on, and it feels like chaos is about to erupt. The deck is almost filled with every worker on board, but there is still no sign of her co-worker, Greg. Then, one of her co-pilots yells something. Violet couldn't understand what he said, but he pointed frantically at the horizon. Violet followed his fingers, and she suddenly realized what was going on. Something is heading towards them at a significant speed. What could it be? All the pilots were ordered to stand by and head to their planes. But what did they see in the sky? And where is Greg? Keep watching the video to find out the whole story. But before that, you can subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell so that you can receive more of these interesting stories. Back to the story. Violet and Greg have been working on an aircraft carrier for a couple of months now. They're transporting aircraft overseas and haven't seen land in weeks. Their lieutenant wasn't specific about what kind of aircraft they were transporting. They only knew that they were headed from Ireland to America. Violet has been unable to sleep at night while the lights go out at 10 and usually it is pretty quiet after that. But in the last two days, she has been woken up multiple times by strange noises. She heard the sound of metal banging together and thought it was someone working late at night, but she was wrong. Rumors are prevailing on the ship about two people sneaking around. No one knows if it's true, but they will be caught and punished if it is. Greg and Violet don't really pay attention to these rumors until one of them starts noticing strange things themselves. And it turns out they aren't the only ones. She asked Greg the following day and he too said that he'd heard sounds. What could it be? They decided to investigate that same evening. They snuck out of their rooms and met at the stairwell. Then they heard that sound again. The sound was faint, but it was certainly coming from downstairs. The pair knew that they had to find out what that noise was. It could be that something is broken and the ship was in danger. The sound had to be coming from the ship's lowest part, about 20 floors down. It was too far for Violet. The sound had been strange, but she was tired and it was definitely not in her department. Greg decided to keep going on and promised to let Violet know if he found something strange. The next day, Violet got up and went to work. She expected to find Greg working on her plane, but he was nowhere in sight. She waited half an hour, but he didn't show up. She decided to ask her lieutenant about Greg, but the lieutenant gave her more questions than answers. Was security already getting tighter? The lieutenant's answer was vague. He told Violet to mind her own business and that Greg was moved to work on a different part of the ship. But why? Violet went downstairs to look for Greg during her lunch break. She'd gotten down almost 10 flights of stairs while she heard the strange sound again. It was then that she realized what it was. It was Morse code. She started to work it out in her head. Ready for... Ready for what? Attack? Violet grew pale and she knew she had to warn someone about the code's message. They were about to be under attack. It was then that the air alarms went off. Chaos erupted all over the ship and everyone ran to their stations with the orders that they were on standby to take off. What was happening? Violet thought this might be a drill at first to test their security, but as she got onto the deck, she noticed something on the horizon. It was a little black dot, but it quickly was getting bigger. The thing got closer and closer every second, but it looked familiar. The stillness aboard the SS Aurora was almost deafening. Crew members exchanged uneasy glances, their gazes frequently drifting towards the expansive window. There, an enigmatic object loomed, suspended in the vast expanse of the sky. Its sudden appearance had brought everything to a standstill. Conversations trailed off, instruments beeped their warnings, adding to the rising dread. But no one dared to speak of what they were all thinking. An unfamiliar voice, eerily calm amidst the overwhelming silence, cracked through the ship's radio. Aurora, this is the command center. We need an immediate and close reconnaissance of the unidentified object. Dispatch a jet. The crew's collective unease grew. Whispers spread speculation rife about who would be chosen. The decision was momentous, and the chosen pilot were tasked with venturing into the heart of the unknown. Violet's heart skipped a beat when Commander Riker's eyes locked onto hers. Violet, he began, his voice solemn. You're our best. We need you. 
She blinked in surprise. Of all the pilots, she had been handpicked. Violet swallowed hard, her initial shock quickly giving way to determination. As the weight of her mission settled in, she nodded. Understood, Commander. She would approach this enigma and face the fearsome unknown. In this ship's vast hangar, technicians swarmed around Violet's jet, the Falcon. Each component was meticulously inspected from the thrusters to the onboard communication systems. She listened intently as the head technician briefed her on a minor adjustment made to boost the Falcon's defensive capabilities. She's ready, he finally confirmed. With a breath, Violet climbed into the cockpit, gearing herself mentally for what laid ahead. The roar of the Falcon's engine shattered the silence. Flames erupted from the rear thrusters, propelling the jet skywards. As the hangar doors parted, the ship's crew watched in awe, many sending silent prayers. Violet's grip tightened on the controls. The mysterious object grew larger in her sight. With each heartbeat, she flew closer and the sensors in her plane started continuously pinging, collecting data. The vast unknown stretched before her, but she was undeterred. Inside the SS Aurora's observation deck, every gaze was fixated on the display screens. The small illuminated dot representing Violet's jet moved steadily towards the vast unknown entity. Her fellow pilots, technicians, and even the ship's janitors found themselves there sharing in the suspense. Each person held on to whatever hope they could muster, silently urging Violet forward, praying for her safe return. As the nebulous cloud surrounding the object loomed closer, uncertainty clawed at Violet's mind. The yeary mist seemed almost sentient, as if beckoning her to uncover its secrets. With her fingers gripping the controls, she closed her eyes momentarily. Penetrating the thick haze of cloud, an uncanny sight greeted Violet's eyes. Encased in the misty curtains was an aircraft, unlike anything she'd ever seen before. Its design was otherworldly, with sleek lines and shimmering surfaces that defied conventional aerodynamics. Violet attempted to establish a communication link, hoping to uncover the craft's intent. Just as Violet began her attempts at contact, her headset erupted with sharp static. She struggled to tune her radio, but every frequency was overwhelming. Alarmed by the increasing disturbance, Violet's instinct screamed for her to return to the safety of the ship. But as she initiated her descent protocol, warning lights flashed. The landing systems were malfunctioning. Panic threatened to engulf her. A bow, the unknown waited and below her escape route was compromised. She adjusted the knobs and flipped switches in desperation, but the results remained the same. Glancing downwards, Violet noticed rapid movement on the Aurora's deck. From her altitude, she couldn't discern details, but the unmistakable sign of chaos below were evident. Amidst the commotion, a jet from the Aurora's fleet began a taxi. Its movements were erratic, lacking the precision of a trained pilot. To Violet's astonishment, the aircraft bolted forward without warning, its engines roaring fiercely as it lifted from the deck. Watching the unfold chaos below, a surge of determination filled Violet. She couldn't remain a passive observer. Banking her jet sharply, she pursued the runway aircraft. Its path seemed aimless, zigzagging through the sky. As Violet adjusted her radio frequency in an attempt to hail the rogue jet, a cacophony of static filled her ears. However, as she persisted, the disturbance started to fade, replaced by a broken but discernible voice. It sounded hauntingly familiar. After a moment of hesitation, the voice solidified. Violet, it was Greg. Greg, what's happening? Why are you in that jet? Violet demanded. Greg's reply was cryptic. I can't explain now. Just follow me. Trust me. His voice was tinged with urgency. Determined to uncover the truth, Violet pressed on. Her duty as a pilot and her feelings towards a friend were in conflict, making every second a test of resolve. With each passing minute, it became evident that this was in a mere game of cat and mouse. Greg's flight pattern suggested a destination, a purpose. Every move was calculated, every turn was deliberate. Despite Greg's impressive maneuvers, Violet's expertise began to show. She closed the gap, her jet shadowed overlapping his. As they soared over the mountains and vast terrains, she could almost make out the details of his cockpit. With every throttle push, she readied herself mentally and emotionally for the inevitable showdown that was rapidly approaching. Just as Violet began contemplating her next move, a sudden change caught her attention. Greg's jet, once swift and agile, began to waver, its movement less assured. A trail of smoke began to emanate from one of its engines. 
Greg's maneuvers became increasingly frantic as the reality of his situation bore down on him. The open expanse of the sky felt smaller with Violet's jet shadowing his every move. She expertly hemmed him in, ensuring that no escape routes were available. The vast horizon ahead seemed to narrow to just one endpoint, the end of a nearby airstrip. The realization of being cornered seemed to hit Greg abruptly. His jet, which had been darting desperately just moments before, showed signs of resignation. Violet watched as he began a controlled descent, the international signal of surrender evident in his flight pattern. Both jets touched down on a dusty remote airstrips, their engines echoing yearly in the silence that followed. As she neared him, her demanding voice cut through the air. Greg, what is going on? Why did you run? Violet, he began, his voice shaking. I needed to set things right. The atmosphere was thick with tension. Crew members exchanged hushed conversations, and every gaze held a question seeking answers about the unfolding drama. The deck's heavy door swung open, out stepped the imposing figure of the commander, his face a mask of restrained fury. He walked with a purposeful stride towards Violet and Greg, his gaze unwavering. I want answers now, she demanded, her voice echoing over the sound of the ship's engines, awaiting an immediate response. Before either could formulate a reply, a shrill alarm pierced the air, drowning all of the other sounds. Confused glances were exchanged on deck as announcements came blaring. A security breach detected. Critical data files compromised. The mood shifted from anger to urgent panic. The ship's command center was in chaos. In the midst of the commotion, Violet found herself in deep thought. The mysterious cloud, the unknown aircraft, Greg's sudden defiance, it all seemed too convenient. A chilling realization washed over her. Could that cloud have been a mere diversion? She whispered to herself, piecing together a potential plot. As the search continued, Greg, looking defeated, slumped against his jet. Seeing no escape, he took a deep breath and turned to the commander. It was me, he confessed, voice breaking. I stole a disk with invaluable data. His confession hung in the air, casting a new sinister light on the events that had unfolded. The puzzle pieces started falling into place. The unidentified cloud and the mysterious aircraft within weren't a mere coincidence or threat. They were all part of a meticulously planned diversion, allowing Greg ample time to execute his plan. Greg's face paled, contrasting the steel structure around him. I didn't want to, he began, his voice trembling. My family, they're in danger. Someone's using them against me. He revealed a personal crisis that forced him into this treacherous act. They showed me pictures, threats, I had no choice. His tears told of both manipulation and a desperate will to save his loved ones. The ship's vulnerabilities were exploited and its tight-knit community was breached all meticulously and malevolently. As technicians worked tirelessly, the disk's contents were finally accessed. Charts, maps, military strategies, information that could tip the scales of global power. If in the wrong hands war could be started, economies could go crashing and nations would crumble. Violet sat alone, lost in a whirlwind of thoughts. Greg's actions, though treacherous, stemmed from desperation. Could she blame him entirely? Yet trust was shattered, bonds broken. She found herself caught between sympathy for a friend and loyalty to her crew. Over time, a semblance of normality began to creep back onto the ship. Repairs were made and security protocols were reinforced. Crew members whispered less and worked more, trying to forget the shock and betrayal. As a ship's tribunal conveyed, Greg stood center stage, the weight of his decision pressing him down. Guilty. The verdict was swift, but his sentence took everyone by surprise. Instead of imprisonment, he was to work under surveillance using his skills for the ship's benefit. But solemn facts the tribunal members delivering Greg's fate. A collective gasp filled the room as his sentence was announced, not incarceration, but in forced service to repay his debt. You will help repair whatever you have broken the commander declared. Greg, head bowed, accepted his destiny, one that was laced with hope and opportunity for redemption. The vast expanse of space beckoned as the ship charted its new course. Monitors glowed with fresh coordinates, leading to unexplored territories. Though the crew's spirit was tinged with the past's shadows, their resolve to forge ahead was undeterred. In the observation deck, Violet gazed at the mesmerizing hues of the setting sun, its crimson rays mirrored the fear in her eyes. I pledged my all, she whispered, fingers touching her pilot's badge.
Her promise was to her crew, her ship, and herself, no matter how fierce the storms or deep the betrayals, her dedication would never waver. The ship, a colossal structure of steel and technology, cruised forward. Its silhouette set against the celestial canvas grew smaller, hinting at the vast adventures that lay ahead. As the stars twinkled, their stories, the ship's recent saga became a chapter in its legendary journey. A journey of betrayal, redemption, and the undying spirit of exploration. If you like the story and think it might have a positive meaning, you can share it with your family and friends. We would also love to hear your comments about the story. Thanks for watching and have a great time.